This time around we'll tell you about the new major update to the game version 1.3.12 Phase 1. This patch adds new ships and game modes, fleet and broker tasks, plus an overhauled system for module modernization. The name Phase 1 is not just for show here. It's a first step in a series of updates which are set to add many new things to the game. The next major update will come out around the end of this year, which we'll talk about in greater detail later. Now, let's get to Phase 1 in earnest. First things first, let me introduce you to one of the new ships called Sirius. This is a Federation destroyer of rank 14, the top rank for ships of its kind. The Sirius differs from destroyers of other factions with its improved mobility, expanded energy capacity and improved regeneration. Unlike its class counterparts, it can also deploy one more stationary field at a time. New rank means new devices to play with. When your destroyer is moving at max speed, its Attila targeting complex module will gradually build up charge which can be used to boost the firepower of your guns one and a half times. The effect will last for just five seconds, but its cooldown is rather short. The player, who prefers mobile combat, can activate this module every seven seconds. You can also build up and store up to three full charges. The destroyer can also deploy a destabilizing field. This field suppresses engines on all ships in its field of effect. All who enter this field will not be able to use their engines to their full. Should they try, they will suffer damage every second. This module is perfect for taking down faster targets, fans of adaptive shields or any other ship that relies on speed to survive and operate. Next up is Hybrid Missile. This module launches an unguided rocket, which travels slow and not very far, while dealing moderate damage. What? Who would want to use this module? You see, this rocket carries a drone. The drone flies fast and fires even faster but it's rather fragile. Moving on to… Repelling Beam. As its name implies, the beam does exactly that. Should you turn it on, it will emit a beam which literally pushes away all that stands in your path. The closer the target is to the beam, the harder it will be pushed away. Which is especially handy when you can't deal with those pesky interceptors, or when you need to scare away enemies with really powerful close-range guns. Aside from its primary effect, the beam damages all it touches. Moreover, the tougher the hull of the enemy target is, the more damage will be dealt to it. This module is bound to save your destroyer more than once in battle. The series can also be equipped with a universal module called Augmented Cooler, which is basically a modified version of the Shared Cooler, but it can be equipped onto Sirius. Not to mention that it works slightly better, too. Okay, now we've covered the first ship. Let me tell you about the missions that will allow you to get the resources required for its actual construction. It's all rather simple. You can accomplish fleet assignments for Arthur Gage using destroyers of rank 8 and 11. You are guaranteed to get some of the rare resource called Electrum, which is required to assemble your very own destroyer of rank 14. Remember that the higher the rank of your destroyer, the more of the set resource you will earn. There are also some new missions from the Broker, for doing which you can get some Neodium, Beryllium or the now familiar Electrum. But wait, there's yet another new craft called Nightgale. Nightgale is Federation's new recon interceptor at rank 8. It embodies all the best traits of Federation craft, such as speed and mobility. Its unique modules make it almost entirely invisible. Its generous energy capacity allow it to be flexible in its application of all power and hull slots. We recommend installing emergency barrier for that extra layer of protection or a power unit conduit to cement your speed advantage completely. Night Gale's alternative special module Phase Jump differs substantially from the Micro Warp. Forget about slow acceleration followed by a continuous high-speed flight. Using the Phase Jump, your recon craft can jink across small distances, disappearing from radars for a while. It reloads quick too, so you should be able to escape most dangers and battle easily. Fear no more colliding with space rocks or wreckage of other ships. By the way, ECM interceptors cannot disable this brand new module. Nightgale's unique module is Drone Marker. This is a kinetic weapon firing shells equipped with tiny recon drones. When these drones hit their target, they mark it for 5 seconds and prevent it from going invisible. This gun is perfect for a tackler, covert ops or other recon craft. Despite its limited application, the marker has decent damage output and rate of fire. Now, if you wish to avoid suffering from the low projectile speed, go for some good old uranium shells and Jericho's 6 implant WPN-FS2 Alpha inhibitor. 
Another combat module for your Nightgale is a masking station. Upon activation, it will conceal you from the eyes of the enemy within a certain range. As long as you're not being fired upon, have missiles launched at you, or being targeted by a skill, you're safe to use this one. You can assume that the game now has an alternative to the face modulator. They both have comparable cooldown timers, but the masking station lasts a little longer. While at the same time, the effect of the station is much easier to disable, and it only conceals ships that are within its area of effect. On the other hand, you can use both devices at the same time, making your Nightgale virtually totally undetectable. MHD Generator is an engine module for your interceptor. It works like this. When you fly fast enough, near to or at max speed, each installed module will slightly increase the damage output of your weapons. Sounds good, right? But alas, the generator uses your engine slot, meaning that you will have to sacrifice some of your mobility. Besides, you can use only one MHD generator at a time. Yes, you technically can install two of these at once, but only one will actually work. The new ship can be assembled by farming the resource called Ship Components, which can be gathered from the loot window following a battle in PvP, PvE or cooperative modes. These components can also be won via Star Marathon fleet assignment given by Arthur Gage. Just remember, you will have to fly the ship of the same rank you wish to build. The more ships of maximum rank you have with you, the higher the chance of you finding the desired component. Besides, you can simply buy the required parts using the button below the ship's icon. Finally, let's talk about the revamped module upgrade system. The system has been simplified considerably, which is a real treat for rookie pilots. Now, modules and guns are improved like this. All modules from Mark II to Mark IV are modified using credits and loyalty points of all three factions. The orange Mark V modules can only be gained via your workshop, where you're presented with a choice what to actually research. The research module is placed in a corresponding slot in your ship. If you remove it from the slot, the research will be paused. Your loyalty points are used for the actual research progress, by the way. These can be earned in battle or by accomplishing various faction contracts. Combat points are spent on research of a new module automatically, while free points are added to your personal account. Once the research completes, you can upgrade the said module using in-game credits. If you, for some reason, decide to stop the research, don't worry, your research progress is saved automatically. You can pick up from the point you left off anytime you want. Another nice addition of this patch – buffs for all Federation craft. Now, when you fly at 90% of your maximum speed, all Federation ships get higher chance to deal critical damage. If you're loyal to the Empire or Jericho, don't worry. Soon, other sides of the conflict will get their own bonuses as well. Game developers have also improved the Dacnif launcher. Now its projectiles fly even faster. Last but not least, we have a new game mode called Threshold Survival. At a glance, this is a regular team battle, where the side that takes out more enemy ships wins the match. The catch is that all weapons and modules in survival deal three times the damage per shot. This is it for this episode. See you in space!